Hello and welcome to another episode of The Average EV. Today we're going to talk about how long should you charge your car. Let's get into it. All right, everybody. So I don't know about you, but I have fast charged several times in my life. And when I'm at the fast chargers, whether it's Legify America, EVgo, or any other uh, charge point operator like that, I notice there are a lot of people that are charging way more than they need to charge up to. Sometimes I'll people, see people charge up to 80%, 90%, and even the occasional 100%. While I'm not you know, in any place to tell you what to do, I definitely think there's some good best practices. Uh, now, whenever I go on a road trip, I like to charge up to as much as I need to so I can get to the next charger. And that is a great way of traveling. And then a lot of people, they just like to charge up to 80%. Maybe they have an e-tron and they charge the same rate all the way up to 80%. And that's a good strategy as well. So what I did was I kind of sat down uh, using Chargeway, which is a great app, I compiled a bunch of data about a bunch of different cars and basically how long they would need to charge to travel 100 miles, how long they would need to charge to travel 200 miles, and then also if you start at a low state of charge, like 5%, how long would it take to charge to 100%? And then I applied it to a fake road trip of 900 miles uh, just to see kind of how much time are you actually wasting spending time at the charger instead of pulling out at a lower state of charge and getting on to the next um, charger. Now, I actually found some really interesting uh, data and information that uh, I'm gonna present to you all in a little bit. I'm gonna step in the car and go over that. But it's not, uh, it, it's not what you might think it is. It's not the same for every car. It's a little bit different for every car. And also some cars, you know, uh, charging up higher is not the end of the world, uh, which I thought was interesting because I've always been a, hey, I just want to charge as much as I need to and then get out. Uh, but I don't know. So we're going to go ahead, step in the car, check out that data and kind of see what's going on. All right, everybody. So let's dig into the numbers. I'm going to kind of walk you through all these um, these sheets in here, and then this will be made available to you all in the description down below, just view all, uh, but just so you can look at it if you wanna spend a little time digging into it or maybe give me some feedback. I love feedback, and uh, this is just something I had kind of been working on over the last month or two. So, first thing here, we have the 350 kilowatt charger. How long is it gonna ta uh, take to charge each of these vehicles from 5% to 50% and to 80% and to 100%? hundred percent and then also the range uh, that is recovered for each of those so I'm not gonna dig too much into that but you can go ahead and look at that the biggest thing I want to note is here at 50% any vehicle in my opinion that can charge up to 50% and recover a hundred or more miles is ideal for road trips um, but obviously I've seen people road trip with cars that have less than that and more in it. And so whatever whatever you wanna do, live your life. Next, just for fun, I also included if you were to charge at a 150 kilowatt charger. Now, some vehicles can take advantage of faster charging, some can't. So obviously the ID4, uh, Model 3, LFP, Ionic 6, and I think that's it. They all have slightly uh, slower times on a 150 than a 350, and a lot of them stay the same, like the Kona I'm sitting in right now. Now here's what you all came for, hopefully. So right here, this is basically showing the ideal trip in my perspective, or at least what I thought was the best thing to do. We'll kind of dig into that a little bit later. So this means, uh, charging up so you have enough to get to the next charger and also having the most efficient trip. Um, so for some of these vehicles like the Ionic, it was able to skip a charger because it could recover 200 miles uh, and some were only able to recover 100 miles so they just hit every charger along the way. This is a made up trip uh, that is going 900 miles and every 100 miles there's a charger. Now this isn't exactly like real life, but I was just trying to create something to give you all a little bit of perspective. 
Additionally, I want to mention, I understand that the EPA estimates may not be completely accurate, but it's what I have to go off of. Eventually, like in some other videos I've done, I would like to test those vehicles on my own and have those numbers of my own to use. But for now, we're going to go with the EPA. This will give you a nice uh, kind of ba uh, basis to go off of. Uh, so when you look here, uh, you can see that some uh, vehicles were able to skip the first charger, some weren't, some had to stop every charger, and basically they charged the same amount because they were charging up to enough to get to the next charger, which was 100 miles. When you look at the end, you can see here uh, the different total times in minutes for the entire 900 mile trip. You see the Ionic 6 has a very impressive uh, own, uh, charging time of 38 minutes for the entire trip. This does not include obviously the driving portion, but for the charging, you're only gonna spend 38 extra minutes to drive 900 miles, which is quite impressive. Uh, again, you can go ahead and look at some of those other numbers, but the um, other thing I want to point out here, a common car I see um, charging out in the wild on road trips, maybe spending t uh, longer than they need to at the charger is the Chevy Bolt. And here it took them 243 minutes to charge for the full 900 mile trip. So you can see that was an extra, not extra, but that's four hours of charging. And that's almost you know, 210 uh, more minutes than the Ionic 6. Then something I did because I thought it was important to um, make note of is that the exit time. Now, sometimes you'll get lucky and the charger will be right off the highway, but that is not the case most of the time. So the exit time is essentially three minutes to the charger, three minutes back to the highway. That's about what I uh, see in my travels. Sometimes you'll luck out one, sometimes you'll get kind of a really bad situation where you have to go six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Uh, but yeah, so let's go with three, three there, three back, six minutes and the more you stop, the more exit time you have, which is something you need to consider if you're going to try and do the charger hop method. Uh, so let's look at this. So a lot of these had 42 minutes of time added just because of getting on and off the highway. And you can see down here, since the Ionic 6 only had to get on and off three times, it was only 18 minutes of extra time. And you can see how that just makes it take an hour of charging plus exit time uh, versus 38 minutes of not. And you can see here the Chevy Bolt, you add almost um, almost another hour to your trip just on exit, exit time getting on and off the highway. Now we're gonna move to trip two. Trip two is essentially you charge up enough to get 200 miles to skip a charger. Uh, Cause some people like to charge a little bit longer. So here we go. We can see um, these different times here. I'm actually gonna show you the comparison in one second, which would be a little bit easier to understand. Um, the exit times went for a lot of them from 42 to 24 because they didn't have to exit as many times. Uh, but as you can see, the charging times are much longer than before. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move on to the next thing that I think is really important to look at, which is this. So the most efficient versus the least efficient. So right here, let me highlight that for you all. That is not including exit times. You can see that when you are charger hopping, which is the uh, most efficient, it tends to take less time than the less efficient where you charge longer and you can skip a charger. Um, and actually in every, every scenario here for every car, it is more efficient. But you look at a couple like the ID4, the Ionic 6, Tesla Model 3, it's not that big a difference actually because of how much range you kind of uh, recoup when you're charging a little bit longer and the charging's a little bit faster. Now over here, I'll highlight this for you all. This adds in with the exits. So taking the exits um, for each vehicle. And what's really interesting is for some vehicles like the Mach-E, the Tesla Model 3 LFP and the Volkswagen ID4, it is actually more efficient to take 
Um, uh, fewer charge stops, so charge up lo- a little bit longer. That way you also cut off exit time and you actually end up saving some time. So the ID4 saves nine minutes, the Tesla Model 3 saves 12 minutes, and the Mustang Mach-E actually saves eight minutes by staying and charging a little bit longer, which I thought uh, was interesting. And just so we can clarify, the longer is um, 200 miles of range added is uh, what that was for this uh, test or scenario, I guess I should say. So that was really, really interesting uh, here. But for all those other vehicles that I did not list, um, obviously doing uh, stopping every time actually helps a little bit. Uh, with the e-tron, where are we at? Uh, Ionic 6, not really that much. So Ionic 6, you have a lot of flexibility really. Um, the Kona, the big the big deal here is this Nissan Leaf. If you were to road trip with the Nissan Leaf, you're adding almost an hour uh, if you do the less efficiency, you wait to charge to have 200 more miles of range and have exits. So there that is. If people like to look at graphs, here they are. This is just showing obviously um, less efficient takes more time. And then here is what we just looked at where it's actually um, a little bit quicker if you charge up a little bit longer for some vehicles. Uh, Next thing I wanna show just real quick, I only picked four vehicles. If you you charge up to 100%, which I do see some people do sometimes. I was on a road trip recently, there was a Chevy Bolt and they were charging up to 100% and good for them, but um, they don't really need to do that. So let me show you uh, what I mean. So the Chevy Bolt here, uh, if they charge up to 100%, takes them 118 minutes, so almost two hours. Uh, 472 minutes of charge time alone, uh, which is 68 eight hours almost. So, woo, eight hours. And then you add 24 minutes, so a half hour. Uh, on the exit time, so 496 minutes. So obviously for some vehicles like the Chevy Volt, it takes way, way longer, and we're gonna look at that. I also did the Mustang Mach-E, uh, the Nissan Leaf, and the Volkswagen ID4, obviously, because we have the Volkswagen ID4. Now let's look at this. So I took the 100% charge uh, with exits, compared it to the most efficient, the charger hopping with exits, and look at this. If you charge your hop with the Chevy Bolt, just getting enough to get to the next charger, you're gonna save almost four hours. Four hours of your life saved by charger hopping and only charging to what you need. Why is that? It's because the Chevy Bolt charges slower and then it charges really slow at the top of the pack. For the Mustang Mach-E, it's kind of interesting. It's only 16 more minutes if you charge up to 100%. So if you really wanted to, you could do it every time. Don't recommend it for your battery, but you could do it. Uh, The Nissan Leaf, same kind of scenario as the Bolt. 111 more minutes if you charge up to 100% every time. And then the ID4, it's an extra hour if you charge up to 100%. Here... uh, Comparing the 100% charge to the less efficient, so the 200 miles of range added, it's the same kind of scenario. It's taking longer when you charge up to 100% here, 191 minutes, 24 more minutes for the Mach-E, an hour more for the Nissan Leaf, and then a little over an hour for the Volkswagen ID4. So what does that mean? What that means is, except for Mustang Mach-E's pretty much, You should not charge up to 100% if you're on a road trip. If you want to get to your destination as fast as possible, you should not charge to 100%. What you should do, um, in my opinion, for the most part, is still just charge up enough to get to the next charger. Depending upon your vehicle, like I showed you with the ID4 and a couple others, you could charge up higher, adding 200 miles. I forget exactly what that percentage would be. Um, but it, it would be like 65, 70, 80%-ish. Um, you could do that, and it's still going to be faster than charging up to 100%. So, yeah, definitely kind of interesting. Um, 
I'd love to know your thoughts. Leave them down below. I've been working on this for a little bit. This is just going to be a view only uh, scenario. Um, but if you all want me to add other vehicles or something like that, drop it down in the comments and I can certainly add that to this. I just kind of picked um, some very common vehicles and also some very common vehicles that I see wasting their time charging at a charger. And I'll add this too. If you're one of those people who tend to charge uh, longer than you need to, I'd love to know why. Um, may maybe like if you're, and l l let me level here. If you're like at a charger stop and like it's dinner time, go get dinner, whatever. Okay. If you are, you're with your family and you've got to get out of the car and run around, whatever, charge up to 80%, not, whatever. I'm just saying, if you really, really want to have the most efficient trip that you possibly can have, this is what you want to do, okay? I know that you know reality is different for everybody for what they what they need and what's going to happen along their road trip, but um, this this is in my opinion what you should do. And the last thing I want to add to, um, because this is also, all this data is assuming perfect conditions. If you get to a charger and you notice it's charging slower than um, you would expect it to charge. I would definitely only charge up enough to get to the next charger because you might save yourself a ton of time, especially if a charger is severely derated, like 35 kilowatts because the, 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 the cable cooling is broken or 50 kilowatts because of whatever issues are going on with the charger. So that's kind of my recommendation. All right, everybody. Well, that is it for today's episode. I hope you found it helpful and, and useful. Um, I certainly found out some things I didn't expect, like uh, this is not my ID4, but for our Volkswagen ID4, if we charge up to like 75, 80% every time, it's not the end of the world. We can skip some chargers, which actually would ultimately save us some time. But for some of you out there, like a Bolt owner or a Nissan Leaf owner, it would behoove you to only charge up to get an, uh, enough to get to the next charger and then charge there. And you'll actually save an immense amount of time. So let's summarize. Don't charge up to 100% on a road trip because you're going to add a lot of time to your road trip. Uh, kind of check out what your what's best for your vehicle. An e-tron should charge up to 80%, maybe. Uh, ID4 should charge up to 80%. A Bolt should charge up enough to get to the next charger. Figure out what it is for your vehicle. Uh, what it is for your vehicle. And then uh, lastly, at the end of the day, you need to do what's ever comfortable for you and for your family. Uh, but if you want to maximize your time, I highly recommend you look into the most efficient way to road trip. Uh, so again, I hope you all found this video helpful. Please leave any comments down below. I'm going to be constantly working on this and um, adding to it over time. I'd love to get your thoughts. I will link this in the in the description so you can look at it whenever you want and get some information. If you want me to add more cars on there, just let me know and I can compile that data so you can kind of look at that and then I'll let you know when that's on there. But that's it for today. Um, please give a like and a subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll catch you all next time.